or to be mean, but sometimes I'm just thinking, well, I'm thinking it and I want to get it off my heart. But sometimes I'm just like walking around Walmart. I hope one of them bugs don't fly in my mouth. <laughs> that happened to me one afternoon. I was at a singing little church and I was singing and a fly flew in my mouth. I tried to spit it out and it walked down. <laughs> and later I got to thinking about it. It was spiritual. He was a stranger and I took him in. <laughs> but I told you my mind wanders. But uh, you know, I uh, sometimes I'm like walking around Walmart and I see something or somebody that makes me wonder why. <laughs> Do y'all ever wonder why about anything? Some of y'all are wondering that right now. <laughs> but for instance, when somebody walks in the room and there's a little dog and they look at that dog and ask, What's your name? <laughs> Why would you ask a dog its name? It's not going to tell you. I have friends and family that tell me, Aaron, our dog doesn't know he's a dog. He's all mixed up. He thinks he's human. And I tell him, no, he doesn't. He knows he's a dog. He barks. <clears throat> That's what dogs do. He knows he's a dog. You are mixed up. <laughs> and then these kids walking around with the seat of their pants between their knees. <laughs> Why? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking if his mama was going to hit him on the hiney, she wouldn't know where to aim for. <laughs> And they think it's cool. They think that it's a new fashion. It's not a new fashion. It was started by us men over 50, moving our waistlines down. We can gain 30 or 40 pounds and still wear the same clothes. We just move the pants down. We've been wearing the seats of our pants between our knees for years. It's, it's not a new thing. But anyway, I'm just wondering why those boys want to wear their pants like that. And then other things make me wonder why. These people that pierce their tongues. Now why would you do that? And then they have those little dumbbell looking things in them. That says something about it right there. And then you ask them, did that hurt? Ask them, did that hurt? And they say, no. And I'm thinking, liar, liar, pants on fire. I have bit my tongue. That hurts. The other day, I was at a church get-together, and a young man walked in with a ring in his nose. And I wondered why. What brings a person to the point in his life that he wakes up one morning, looks in the mirror, and says, something's missing? <laughs> and then it just dawns on him, I need a ring in my nose. I figure if he'll just wait a few years, marriage will take care of that. <laughs> now marriage is a wonderful institution. <laughs> if you want to be institutionalized. <laughs> but I'm wondering, why, why do you want to... And, and then they put those things through their eye, eye, eyebrows and, and through their lips. And I'm thinking, you look like you fell in a tackle box. <clears throat> why would you want to do that? I'm not judging, I'm asking why. And then I, here's something a little closer to home. I have friends and family who have tattoos. If you want one and you got it, good for you. I'm not judging you. I'm just wondering why. Because when my doctor says I need to give you a shot, it scares me to death. Personally, I can't see me saying to somebody, Take that needle and put a motor on it. I don't want that. 
And what, what got me thinking about this, I saw a young man with a, fly, with a teardrop tattooed under his right eye. A few days later, I saw a young lady with not enough clothes on with a flower tattooed on her stomach. Is it a sin? I'm not saying it's a sin. I am saying the sin is what it's going to look like 45 years from now. <laughs> that teardrop's going to be on his chin. <laughs> and the flower will be wilted. <laughs> So, anyway, moving right along, now I'd like to do what I was going to do a while ago before I got sidetracked. Usually, it takes someone else to sidetrack somebody. I can sidetrack myself. <laughs> but the thing about it is, when you're over 50, if you think of something, you need to go ahead and say it. <laughs> Don't lose it, because you might not remember it again. <laughs> and you'll spend the rest of the night wondering what you were going to say. <laughs> Thank you. About to have church. Somebody said amen. <laughs> Are you Baptist? Yeah. See there? <laughs> She's a Baptist. Some people think Baptists aren't emotional enough. <laughs> they haven't been to our business meetings. <laughs> Anyway, moving right along, I'm going to sing a couple of little songs that some of you asked for. Here's one I did on one of the Gaither videos. It goes like this. Since all her friends have got one, now my wife wants one too. A knee-length fuzzy fur coat. Nothing else will do. Said she looked real classy. Make me proud of her. I just break down by her fur. Well, it got me to thinking, how am I gonna swing that sort of deal? The Lord knows I can't afford it, and it's wrong to steal. But the problem finally solved itself, like a bolt out of the blue. Jumped right out in front of me on Highway 22. <laughs> That big old German shepherd <laughs> My car he did not see Now he's in dog heaven But his hide belongs to me <laughs> For three weeks in the basement I worked late almost every night It was mostly trial and error But I finally got it right I put it in a cardboard box Carried it upstairs to her Oh, she was tickled pink to see that fur. Now she's got a fancy fur coat, reaches all the way to her knees. But she's been complaining lately, said her closet's full of fleas. She don't know old Fido is wrapped around her tight. She's putting on the dog when she goes out at night. <laughs> Well, she's been depressed here lately since I backed out over the cat. But I think she'll feel much better when I give her this new fur hat. 